Hello everyone, in this video we're going to look at the 11.1, um, sorry, uh, chapter 11, the linear regression and the correlation um, chapter. So let's first we're looking at the introduction, introduction to linear regression. So linear regression, we most likely we have <coughs> a dependent variable and um, for example, you have we have gas mileage, price of the houses, natural de like uh, just dependent variable, and then response variable, okay, or independent variables. Um, so in a lot of cases, the um, the y and x has a linear regression. For example, if you buy a house, and if it's most likely if it's the same similar house, same age. If it's like a square feet, if it's bigger, then the uh, price is higher. If it's smaller, prices are uh, lower, and the uh, same thing as the tax. Okay, so um, other things as well. Okay, so you have we have a lot like uh, for example the gas mileage. If the car weight is heavy, and then the gas mileage is lower, so you have a negative linear correlation. So we we are going to use a uh, a model to a linear model to feed the data to estimate the data. Why do we do that? Because, for example, if we have something like uh, uh, some data like a linear regression like this, for example, this is a uh, um, 2012. The um, the sales. Uh, okay, so it's increasing the sales department. Then how much like a TV sales, amount of TV sold out in 2012, 2013, 2014, and you have 2015. So we can estimate 2016, then what is 2017, probably is still increasing, giving a prediction. And based on this linear model, we can predict the next year's sales, like uh, next year's level, okay? So we can use linear model to predict uh, the future um, demand. Okay. So next one, let's look at the uh, um, another ex another model is if we also have different, for example, several several variable could uh, could affect the y. And um, for the for example, in the case where the response to the price of a house, one would expect the age of the house contribute to explanation to the price, and uh, also the location of the house maybe also contribute to explanation of the price because if it's normally it's close to school, close to where the in the city, uh, like more convenient, the price is high like that. We have different uh, different variables could all contribute to the price. So you have y equals, we may have y equals beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2. Sometimes we may have more from the variable beta 3 x 3. We all have linear um, regression, linear model can fit it, right? So like this, the house x 1 could be the square footage, which is the area, like how big it is. And then x 2 could be the years, the age, okay? So we can do the uh, next section. We're going to introduce how to how do we um, estimate it. For example, if I have a point here, a point here, a point here, I can estimate the line like this, and then or like this, or this. So which line could be the best fit for all three data here? This is a pretty, well, maybe four data. So which line is better? Which one? Which which line would be the best fit for all these four data as a linear model? Okay. So that's the um, the thing we're going to consider next. How we're going to how how we're going to how we're going to find out the best best fit best uh, uh, coefficient for beta and beta one and beta zero. <clears throat> so simple linear regression model is. Uh, Describe as y equals beta 0 plus beta 1 x plus epsilon. In the above, like beta 0 and beta 1 are unknown intercept and slope parameters respectively and it's like a sigma um, is a random variable that's just a distribution like an error, random error. Okay. Uh, then 
what's next then <clears throat> um, we have this one the error okay the app should the the, um, the expectation of the error equals zero the variance of the error is a sigma square this is not um just give me one second oh the sigma square is the um standard deviation okay so random error so expectation of that we wanted the error be very um small almost equal zero is zero is better so from the model above several things become very uh, apparent the quantity the quantity y is a random variable since the um the e the small e you can see this is e or epsilon okay we call this epsilon uh, then, if this epsilon is um, is, a, is also a random variable, okay, the value of x regress a variable is called a random error. It's called the is not random, but in fact it's measured with uh, negligible error, so a negligible error. So this is a small error should be you fit it, and then the quantity error, the epsilon often is um, Assume that this error should be equal to zero, and they will have a epsilon. The um, standard deviation will not be zero. Variance equal epsilon equals sigma square. Okay. So let's look at a uh, uh, next uh, picture. You can see that. So for example, we have one, two, three, four, uh, four lines. Now, if you have the error, this is the error one. This is the error two. Error three error 4 you add all of this together hopefully you have the error equals 0 expectation value of the error this random error is 0 because you have different fitting line have different errors right so we want to minimize this error get the best fit so the fit regression line for the next section is fit regression line so basically what we will have a a th uh, estimation a feature regression line is supposed to be zero plus b one x. Okay, so how are we going to make sure this is the best feet? So the best feet, we're going to look at the um, eleven point three at least the square and a feet model. For each value, for each x i, for example, one two three four five six. For example, this is my feet line. I got y equals b0 plus b1x. Well, this is the um, y1, the actual value, y1, y2, y3, y4, y5, y6. So for this five, these six values, for each y we have a actual y values, and uh, we want to estimate the y values. We uh, this we have the um, the approximation for the y. Okay, so for between this y, be for this model here, we got a y is this one, this y1 hat, this is the y2 hat, and uh, y3 hat, y4 hat is here, y5 hat, hat. So for each y, you have a estimate value. This is y, this is another y. You can see for each of them, there is an error. This one, there's this one, and this one, and this one. For each of them, they have a, for each y6, this is a little one here, for each of the y values, there is a error. There's an error for them, right? Okay, so, and between the actual value and the fitted value and the estimated value, there is an error between them. So what do we need to do? We add all the various, uh, all the error together. The best thing is put a square, then add them together. If I just add this one, for example, if I have, uh, this one, this one, I add this, this is the error is 1, this error is negative 1 because you subtract it, right? Use y, i, subtract the actual values, y1. And you got y2, also oh, y2, this is the y, yeah, y2 hat, and this, sorry, this is the y2 hat. This is the one, y1 one hat. So hat is going to be the estimated value. So this is the y2 actual value, this is the y2 actual value. So if you subtract this is the error is one, subtract this one, error is negative one. This up and the above is the below. So if you add those two, there is no error. That's not right, right? Because you do have error. Both of them have this one have positive one error, this one have negative one error. So you cannot say there's no error. If you just add them together, there is no error, which is not true. So the best thing to 
to get rid of this error is either add absolute value to um, get rid of the positive and negative um, sign because positive and negative can cancel it out so we want to make sure every, that we don't cancel each other we want to add like uh, put a measurement to describe this uh, difference between the y values and uh, a positive one and negative cancel there is no there is no difference which is not true so the best way is either put absolute value or we just put a abs put a square on all of them so the best way to do it is put a square because if you put a square we can take the derivative if you take calculus if because if you do the absolute value it's pretty hard to take the derivative absolute value of function is not continuous you look at the absolute value of function is like this it's not continuous at this point but a square is better square is continuous everywhere so we can take the derivative okay so that's why we have the methods of least square method okay so we want to ma as we want to minimize the um SSE, I think it's called um, the sum of square of uh, the error. So basically, add all the square, all the error square together, f from 1 to m. So the error is the actual value, the actual value yi minus the um, minus the fitted value or the uh, approximated model value. So uh, because y hat equals b plus 0 plus b1x. So it's going to be minus y minus b zero minus b one x i square. This is act. This is the fitted value. This is the actual value. There's a difference between them. So square all of them add together. It's going to be the total error. And then the partial S S E and the partial b y, which is the derivative. If the derivative equals zero, if the derivative equals zero. Then we will reach the min well, the minimum value. Okay, so what do we do? We we'll take the derivative on this one. Take the derivative. Derivative of this one is the square is two times y i minus zero b zero minus b one x i, and uh, derivative of x or derivative b zero. Derivative b zero is negative one, so we have a negative one, and this equals zero. So we solve this one. We got negative 2 i from 1 to n y i minus b 0 minus b 1 x i okay so this one equals 0 then from here we can solve I think we can solve if this one equals 0 right the next one is b 1 equals 0 so partial partial s s e the all the partial y partial b 1 Okay, so derivative with respect to b1 equals 0 as well. Since the b1 is a square, you have a square on the b1. So take the derivative, we will have negative 2 is a negative sign in front of b1 as well. And l equal 1 to n yi minus b0 minus b1 xi times xi. So because the derivative of b1 is a coefficient as xi, so this one also equals 0. Then we're going to solve this one and solve the second one and uh, solve for b0 and b1. So the first one we got, you add all of them together. So you get from this one, you, you can divide both sides by negative 2. So you only have add all of the b0 together is mb0. You add all this together is negative and is um. You put in the mind, you multiply that, or you just divide it and you shift this other side, you get mb0. You can multiply it out. Positive, positive, negative, and put the negative one i in the other side. mb0, so you got this one, and this one remain on the left side. mb0 plus b1 times all the xi together. And shift this one to the other side. You got all the yi. Okay, this is the first equation. The second equation you got is this one equals zero. Second equation got this one equals zero. Shift the x to the uh, uh, shift the x y on the other side. You sh uh, leave the b zero b one on the one side because you have 
you before you had x plus y equals one, x minus y equals two. You have this, you solve x and y. You use animation, animation method, right? So do the same thing here because you want to solve b zero and b one. So she, leave this one on the left side. You have also have m b zero. Um, b zero have an x i. There's an x i here. So you multiply it. So you have um, b zero multiplied by all the x i. And a plus this one um, b zero b one times x i square i from one to n equals shift the other one to the other side because this equals zero this negative go the other side equals i from one to n and x i y i okay so all the x y and i y i are given x i and y i are given values so only b0 a is given how many data you have only b0 and b1 are not given are what we are looking for so solve this two dimensional linear equation we have b1 equals sigma 1 from n x i minus x bar which is the mean value of x y i minus y bar which is the mean value of y and uh, i from 1 to n x i minus x bar square this is the b1 b and the b0 which is the coefficient which is the y intercept which is um, <coughs> once you solve for b this is much easier once you solve for b you can just plug it in b0 equals y bar which is the uh, value of the all the y values is given the data minus b1 is given plug into here b1 times x bar so this is the intercept okay so to calculate that is uh, to calculate that there is a to calculate to calculate that just give me one second let me see what's this right, so next example it gave you all the x i give you x i give you what sorry this is the previous example gave you the, all the data this data here so all the x value given, all the y y value are given. So basically, you just need to plug in all the numbers in it. You find x i, find a y i, x y times y i times x square, i square. Plug in the formula. You find b one and b zero. Okay. So in the um in the Excel or uh, StatCrunch, either one of these two provides um provide the linear regression model as well okay either one of these two can do the linear regression model so basically if it's a small if it's a small data like your four or five data you could use the excel like you could use handwriting to do it if it's more than 33 like this you have to use the excel or the stat crunch you use excel you can use the excel to do the summation and you, you can still use the excel to do the formula to uh, do the calculations okay not just one step do but you can use excel to find the summation find the summation find this on uh, the multiplication find this okay that's not a big problem All right so next one uh what is good about this is a discussion of least square you can read that yourself first is uh, as i said you can do the max, uh, the absolute value of this two, minimize this. But it's not easy to do that. Be you know, it's not because this function is not continuous. Is is the absolute value my positive and negative is switch back and forth. Okay, so the minimize this uh, the the least fitting square. Uh, you can take the derivatives, which is much better. Okay, that there's a discussion here. You can read this one. Both both doing the um, absolute value. Minimize the absolute value of the error is it's okay. It's, it's a reasonable method, but um, you should remember the residues are this one are not easy to to carry to how do you find the minimum value of this? Okay, it's not easy to do the uh, mathematically find a solution so quickly So the least fitting least fitting square is the most popular at, at least right now in the statistics area so 11.4 is properties of least square estimate. Then the property of the least square estimate basically it discusses the mean and variance of the estimators. For example, the bi and uh, the bi the uh, coefficient, the mean value, and the, the uh, variance of the estimation. Okay, and um, 
the estimated sigma square as a mean square error. You can read this uh, this uh, section, 11.4, it's not really bad. Um, it's sh very short. 11.5 inference concerning regression coefficients. Okay, so basically this 11.5, it tells you whether this regression line is good or not good. If it's a linear, linear model is or not a linear, linear correlation. So what do we do? You look at the example. What do you do? You can do, or we can do the confidence interval beta i a 100 times 1 minus alpha percent confidence interval for the parameter beta 1 in the linear regression line for this is this. So basically, instead of giving, instead of giving a, a 1, one line, it gives you like a 95% confidence interval. This line could be, the, the line could be switched a little bit, 95% this regression line, okay? So give you a, a data for the uh, the coefficient, not exactly just one line, give you a, like a more flexible on the uh, the coefficient. So this 11.2 uh, is another example that tells you the coefficient of confidence interval. Hypothesis test on the slope. This one basically, this means after you've done this work, does it, is it really a good estimation or not good real estimation? So normally we not hypothesis assume that beta one equals zero, beta one not equals zero, for example, and uh, then you use the uh, t distribution and test it if it's a really good, like if it's a fitting linear re relationship or not linear relationship. If I have some point, if I have some, some, if I has, have something like this, like this, like this, like all random vari numbers, and there is not, nothing, there is no line actually close to any of them. It, all of them have, because it's too scattered, it's just like random numbers. Okay, so it's not really a good, like a linear re correlation between the y, y values and the x values. So then, in your, in your, when, you, when you do the test model, after you do the, cal uh, the calculation, you will have a number can tell you the p-value. The p-value is, uh, is slow, so the p is small, which means it's a good fit. When you do the, when you do the, um, the linear correlation, the, the fitting square and your static crunch will, will excel, you are going to see a p-value in the end, okay? So you can see, <coughs> sometimes, Sometimes even the p even the p value for example even is have like a second uh, nonlinear correlation you still have a linear relationship here nonlinear correlation here this is totally nonlinear okay so <coughs> um in the next in the next uh, in the eleven point five it also gives you a uh, confidence interval on the beta zero okay. And the beta zero. So these two are the. Let me see. Um, statistics interval on the uh, intercept confidence interval confidence interval hypothesis test on the coefficient b beta zero may be established from the fact that b zero is all is also normally distributed. So we also have a t distribution for those b b values. It has a t distribution a minus two degree of freedom for which we may construct a confidence interval for alpha as well. So this is the beta zero have a confidence interval. So according to the formula, you can use the formula. Normally S is given SXX, you can find it. T alpha to find from table, B zero is, is um, the actual, you can find from the model number, okay. So uh, you can estimate the, the interval for B zero as well, okay, for the intercept as well. So this is 11.5. And then 11.6 is the prediction. We're going to use, basically, you, once you have the model, you can use that, if the model is a linear model, you can use that model to predict the next level. Basically, just plug the next x value into the model, you have the y values, okay? So for the y value, you also can uh, have a confidence interval of the next time. For example, 2017, what's the demand of this, uh, a uh, car or demand of this resource, whatever it is, you we can pre predict it. If it's uh, once you have the mathematical model, right, statistical model, you can predict the next year what the math, what the amount would be. 
And um, I think you can you read you can read the whole section, read all of them, and see if you have any questions. Look at the example. Basically, just have the uh, formula, plug the data into the formulas, and find out the find out the um, the uh, prediction interval. Okay. And uh, eleven point seven is choice of regression model. This eleven point six is uh, actually tells you. Uh, the regression whether is a linear regression or not a linear regression model you have to um, choice which one is is going to be better okay, so 11.8 is the analysis of variance approach uh, often the problem an 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 sorry an an a problem of a problem of a an, an analyzing the quality of estimate is an an analysis of variance is called a ANOVA an over approach basically find the uh, correlation uh, or covariance okay or um, coefficient okay so we're going to see if the relationship is linear or nonlinear a procedure whereby the total variation the dependent variable is subdivided into meaningful component variance it's called a ANOVA analysis in the in your Excel or StatCrunch, you also have the ANOVA analysis. You can uh, see that. Basically, it tells you, you use this one, it tells you um, it tells you if okay, it tells you if they have um, let's, let's read this, it tells you if it has a um, linear regression or not. So the first component of SL is the regression sum of a square exponent model. Okay. So next one, uh, let me see. It also it gives you a f f value. So now hypothesis reject. You can read this one. I think it's uh, this another an another uh, analysis to tell you if it's a re regression. Is a uh, is linear or not linear? Okay, if they have correlation or not? Okay, you can say that have a regression error total. We're gonna have examples in the homework. You can do that and see if you have any questions. So next one, test for linear 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 sorry, test for uh, linear regression. So if they have linear relationship or not is for especially for the repeated observations. For example, a lot of time, a lot of data I have, you re the data are repeated. So, is it good for use the linear model or not? Okay, and um, um, so finding the s square, you can um, the error sum of square consists of two parts. The first one is amount due to the variation between the variable y within the given value of x on the component that is normally called lack of feet of contribution. So the first component reflects more random variable or pure x experiment error. Well, the second component is measure of the systematic variation brought by the higher order terms. In our case, these terms are x other than linear or first word or contribution. Okay, so. If we choose a linear model, we essentially assume that this second component does not exist. Well, hence our error sum of square is completely due to the random errors. Okay, there is no uh, systematic error, just uh, the random error. Okay, so this measure, this uh, we can use the method to to test if it's a linear function or not. So basically, we we want to test the this compare the value with the f value. I think. Okay. Uh, for example, let's look at example in 11.8. Observation of yield chemical reaction taken at various temperature were recorded in the table 11.4. So this is the recorded table. We have repeated values for 150, 200, 250, 300. Okay. So the part conclusion that we have a result. This is the analysis result. And we have the uh, partition of the total variation in this matter reveals a significant variation accounted for by linear mod and its insignificant amount of variation due to lack of feet. Thus, the experiment data do not seem to suggest the need to consider terms higher than first order in the model, and the null hypothesis is rejected. So basically, according to this one, we find the p-value is um, 
we find a PF value, so we compare, I think it's regression is 50 sum of squares 509.25, error is 3.8660, natural feet to pure error, and the total sum of squares, mean value, we find the computed F values, find the computed P values, okay. So the first P value is small, it's good, but the second P value is 0.22, which is pretty big, okay. So if the P is low, the null hypothesis must go. So regression, first one is less than 0 0.001, then we must reject the null hypothesis. So in that, we can say that reject is lack of fit. The fig of 11.18 is used another software, which we don't have the software provided by the Pearson. It's the SAS, uh, SAS. And if you go to a statistical major, I think you are going to learn this so software. You have to some school provide it, some school don't, and it's uh, uh, it's not free. I don't think it's free SAS so, uh, software. You can also do the uh, P, uh, the statistical work. Okay, so uh, we look at the the LOF with the two degree of freedom represent the quadratic cube contribution from the model, and the p value of point two two suggesting that linear model is adequate. Okay, uh, let's look at continue to look at the next. Uh, Next uh, section, data plus and the transformation. So basically in this one, we are going to look at another kind of data is the data itself is not linear, but with some transformation, it's a linear model. Uh, for example, if I have um, x and uh, well, some, especially you take LM, a lot of uh, numbers, for example, x equals 1, uh, 2, 3, and y equals, for example, e1, e2, e cubed. Well, if you look at this function, it itself is like this function, it's like an exponential function. But if I take you, if you take the ln on y, you're going to have x, you can do ln y equals x then the ln and x will be linear function, okay? So you can do 1.01, 2.01, 3.01, you can do 0.001. So now if you take the ln, then sometimes you have the linear regret, linear, uh, linear model, okay? So this is the data transformation for linear, um, linear regression. So first one, exponential model, if you have an exponent, normally, how do I know what model I'm going to use? First, you graph the data. If you graph the data, it's like this, it's exponentially model. So you take the ln on y, see if you have, then regress y star, which is ln, y, and x, if they have any linear regression or not. So you do that, okay? And also, power function, you can take the L or log y. Well, reciprocal function, you take one over x, okay? And uh, hyperbolic function, you take one over y. Then the new y will have the linear relationship. After you do a transformation, they probably have a linear transformation. So that's the, um, how do we do this? Uh, you can look at example 11.9, the pressure P of a gas corresponding to various V is recorded. And the data I gave in table 11.7, we have the data. You graph the picture, I can't graph the picture here, but if you graph the picture, I think it's uh, decreasing very sharply. 50, 60, 90, 100. So start from 60, 4, 40, 40, and uh, it goes to here, it's like this. Okay, so definitely it's not a linear function, it's uh, like a exponential decreasing. So you take ln on the V, take ln on V, take ln, so P itself and V itself is no linear correlation. But if you take LM, you look at the LM values. LM PI you got a four point that. LM VI you got three four four four. LM PI LM four. Okay. So if you take if you look at this, they don't have any uh, linear regression. But if you take LM, they do have a linear slope. You look at the intercept LM C C and uh, gamma. So. This one, you can use the um, the linear, if you take it out and you're gonna have the numbers like this, okay? So yes, there is a linear linear correlation between the transformation numbers, okay? <coughs> 
So 11.11 .11 is a simple linear case, linear regression case study. Uh, it, there is a project about the uh, project 2. You can refer this one. I think you definitely can refer this one for your project 2. You have the data. You can do the linear regression and give some presentation about what the data tells you. Okay. So 11.12 is correlation. Correlation basically we're going to have a coefficient. It's called correlation coefficient to describe the correlation between x and y, x value and y value. So r is between 0 and 1. R is less than or equal to 1, bigger than or equal to 0. Actually, it's bigger than 0, less than 1. The more close to 1, the more uh, correlation between them will be. Okay. So plus 1 or minus 1. If it's plus 1, they have positive correlation. If it's minus 1, they have negative correlation. So for some strong, uh, if it's 0.3 or 0.4, it's 0.1, it means mm, it's not really, it's, if it's 0.1, definitely it's not much correlation. Okay. So, if I have r equals 0.3 and r equals 0.6, it only means that we have two positive correlations. Okay, one of the correlations is somehow stronger than the other one. We cannot see 0.6, it means always oh, twice as good as the 0.3 in the relationship. Not like that, okay. It's just to have a stronger positive relationship, okay. So, uh, if you have a two values, if you can do the two values, if you have x and y values, you can definitely find out, use this uh, software to find out the um, correlation between this x and y, okay? Um, you can see there is correlation between x and y in this one. There is no association, no correlation in the x value. But, even sometimes in r equals zero, it doesn't mean there is for sure there is no correlation, okay? If it's not in if it's, for example, if the part B, you can see there is a nonlinear correlation. You don't see a linear correlation, but it says a nonlinear correlation. Maybe you still get R equals zero, R very small. It only means that it lacks of, it lack of linear, linear, linear correlation. It doesn't mean it does no relationship between X and Y. But this one you can see. So normally we need to graph the picture first, graph X and Y, and then we can tell if there's what relationship they do have. Okay. So I think this is the whole section of 11 point, chapter 11. You read the textbook, look at several examples, finish your homework, and this will finish your project, finish the data, and you should be fine. Okay.